Yes, welcome back. This is F a Rap Critic and Changing of the Hip Hop Guards. I'm your boy Malik16, and no, not packing a mag in the back of the act, but I'm here for the ride with the homie, man, with the OG, with the pro, Uncle E once again. Yes, and, sir, yes, sir. We're here to give you part two. I know on Changing of the Hip Hop Guards, there's already a part two, so this might be parts three and four on that channel. But for here, this is episode 41.5 on F a Rap Critic. And uh, we're going into the second half of our review of the classic, which just turned 25, Capital Punishment by Big Pun, the debut album. And uh, this is where we go over category two, which is the rap performance on the album. With no further ado, we're gonna jump right into it. Uncle Lee, unless there's something you wanna say to the people, we're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, no, just uh, real quick, once again, thank you for allowing Changing the Hip Hop Guards to be a part of this, man, especially this classic album like Capital Punishment. Um, and to everybody tuned in, just make sure you check out F a Rap Critic on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, like, share, leave a comment, let them know how you like these episodes. And um, for us, you could go over to the other station, Changing of the Hip Hop Guards. Make sure you do the same over there. Hit that subscribe button, like, share, leave us a comment. Shout out to my partner, the journalist, Sincere. Um, and yeah, let's get this going, man. Yeah, man, shout out to everybody on the check-in for the first couple videos. Uh, it's been it's been fun, man, seeing some of the comments and just hearing people overall talk about uh, their reflections on this album. So we, we're part of that wave, man. And, and you made it, Uncle Lee. Uh, you didn't get no hate mail yet from, from the first half, did you? <laughs> nah, not yet, man. Actually, uh, <laughs> I know, right? Um, actually, not we, I, a couple of comments. All the comments were good. Um, they enjoyed the episode, of course, giving, you know, uh, dope compliments about the album. Uh, and actually, one was saying, oh, man, I can't wait for part two. So I told him that's coming very soon. So now everything so far has been positive. I don't think anybody's been uh, beating me up yet, or <laughs> unless they haven't said it yet. But yeah, now nah, everything's good. <laughs> yeah, I got to give you your props. You you made one of the most in-depth, like, expert analysis episodes. Like, it, it's... <laughs> For sure, the longest episode on on Ever Rap Critic, but because we we let the whole thing run the whole like almost two hours. But right, right. For all of y'all who watched it, remember every episode the timestamps are there. So if you want to skip around and just hear the main points you want, you always have that option. But like, it, it's just good energy, man. Like I, you know, I couldn't I couldn't choose a better my, my, uh, partner in crime for this. So with no my problem, apologies, man. My apologies, but. Listen, man, there's a lot to say. You know what I mean? You can't just be like, yeah, that was pretty good. You right. Know, and check. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? No, we broke him down, man. I was yeah, watching yeah. his back with a big smile. Anyway, cool. yeah. So here we go. The first dimension in category two is going to be dimension one, personality and charisma. Cool. What can we say? Personality and charisma. <laughs> um, well, if you want me to kick that off real quick, uh, Personality and charisma, I'm going to say, of course, to me, Punt had both. Um, you know, he came off, he was very charismatic, funny guy. Um, you know, I think we said this in the first one, but uh, to me, he kind of had the whole package. Uh, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what I think. Yeah, I think, you know, when we, we were talking about Terror Squad, and we even went, you know, a little deeper when I started talking about Armageddon, uh, mentioning how there was a little friction between Ian Pun because he was supposed to be next up by chronological order, if for no other reason by tenure, he was supposed to be next up. But out of that whole squad, and I know it could be argued that we didn't get to see the extent that Cuban can go to, Pun just had that thing. You you were saying this in the first video. He just had the it factor, right, right, uh, right. the makings of a star. That, that surpass even Fat Joe. I think the reason Fat Joe is so successful now is because he learned how to tap into that for himself. He learned how to give us more than just the persona, the, like you mentioned, the big presence. It's the dog called a Gina. Right, like, right. Here's me with some humor. Yeah, with Pun, I, 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 I would love to know, you know what I mean? Did it just 
come out naturally on the music because of his style and influence with different genres or like what well, how did that happen and that that would be a very cool story to find out you know but um but yeah you're right he had it all he had it all i find i find the, this question is hard to ask the artists themselves <laughs> you know like i I asked OC this, and OC, OC just gave me some of the best answers ever. Like, OC was just real transparent. He was like, nah, not really, because I didn't know who I was back then. I was like, oh, what an answer, you know? <laughs> but I asked right. you know, someone else, they're like, yeah, that's who I am. Based on everything I've ever read about Pun, all of the accounts from the people that were involved in this album, the people that were his boys that ran with him, and, you know, just people like with Minnesota, who was on the, the last episode. So, right. They all, it's all consistent. The stories never really deviate. It says Pun was a jokester. Right. Really, really enjoyed humor. And Pun was for his people. And he was reckless. And he was really about that gangster life. Like, th nothing deviates, no matter who tells the story. So I do, I do think it's possible for this, you know, this jokester to also be someone who, who packs tons of guns and, you know, had, grew up, grew up hard. And that's what you're hearing. And then there's this awareness, man. It's this, there's this smarts. You gotta be smart to have that kind of vocabulary in the first place, right? Yeah. Uh, he gives you vulnerability too. I was about to say he doesn't have any vulnerable songs. That's not true. Cause uh, Punish Me, he's the loser in that. Like, you know, he's, he's scorned. He's been spurned and scorned and hurt. And this is him speaking from a place of hurt. Like, you're keeping my son from me. You cheated on me. He could have easily made himself just sound like the Don, the whole album, but he has those moments. He talks about being poor. You know, when I was young, they called me punny because I was always hungry, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and I know we're talking about Capital Punishment, but, you know, not to, but on the second album, you even hear it also, you know what I mean? Like, even even, even yeah. on the song, like, uh, It's So Hard, where he's just kind of like, you know, I'm trying to live, like, even though that's kind of, but, but when you hear someone say that, bro, and especially knowing, like, okay, you know, he's overweight, struggling with a lot of things, yeah. and to hear him say, you know, I'm trying to, like, even that little yeah. piece right there hits you. So, but yeah, man, he... he yeah. There's a, there's a presence he has that lets you know he could have done any, any arena of entertainment. He would have thrived if he yeah. chose to be a comedian, an actor, because he has, again, it's, it's really hard to always articulate. Like you said, it's the it. He, it factor, yeah. he captures you. He captures you. He doesn't have to be the loudest in the crew, because at that time, he wasn't the loudest. He doesn't have to be the prettiest, because I think at that time, Cuban might have been considered the most like marketable because of looks, you know what I mean? And it just, he broke the mold and, and had an unprecedented presence for hip hop, we he's a mix of things we've seen before. He had Coogee Rap, he has Fat Joe, he has Big E, he has Heavy D, he has a lot of these sensibilities, uh, but all put in one, you know. Uh, and with, with the, and we also talked about him having that little horrorcore edge. If you listen to like the, the way he describes torture throughout this album, you could tell his mind goes to these places, but yeah. But yeah. All something to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats. What you giving this for personality? One to five. Uh, I give him a five. I give him a yeah. five, hands down. Four or five, hands down. That takes us to dimension two. We talk about the believability or the suspension of disbelief. Um, I don't know if this is an album that's asking you to suspend your disbelief. I think. It comes out telling you, this is Big Pun. Here's your introduction to him. This is who he is. On most of his records, he's telling you, this is who I am. Uh, so he's not going into a character. Can that, right. can we, is it easy to strike that from the process of elimination? Yeah, I would say so. I didn't, I don't, I didn't get any, um, you know, and it's funny, right? Because his name is Big Pun, Big Punisher. Right. And, and, but, you don't really take that. It, it's almost like he took the name and it kind of became his own, actually. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's not like he was sort of. I mean, not that I could think of, man. I don't. Nothing stood out to me where I was just kind of like, 
you know, oh, he's taking like the persona of the character or, or anything right. like that. Um, so, so yeah, yeah so no, no. No. especially considering I think his original rap name was like Big Moon Dog Punisher. Big, big Dog, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then it was Big Dog Punch, and then it was just Big Pun, right? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. So if we we take that out the equation, this is not a concept album. This is not an album where you're being required or requested to suspend your disbelief from the beginning. Then it all comes down to the question of how much do we believe Pun on this album? Uh, we talked in the first video about how he makes these very artistic delineations between when he's talking street stuff and when he's talking rap stuff and i'm i I feel like in each instance at least me personally and i'm supposed to keep my personal out of i believe him in every instance when he's talking about being a better rapper than rappers i'm like i can see your point i can see your point when he's talking about being more street or just as street as other street dudes i'm like i can see your point he does this thing that prodigy does which i always thought was interesting because it's crazy as prodigy talk he always added like a caveat like yeah he can get got too but it doesn't matter as long as he goes out and does you damage and pun mm-hmm. does lines like that so i mean i don't know how, how believable is pun on the air is he making like larger than life claims to you I, you know that that was tough i mean i'm gonna say no Part of me is going to say no, uh, because there's nothing again that stood out. I mean, again, man, it's 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 music and entertainment, right? There, of course, there's going to be certain things within the rhyme that, you know, sound a little bit over the top or a little bit exaggerated. But if we're talking about like, do I believe Pun to be the type of person that he sort of was described in some of the songs and stuff like that? I'm going to say yes. Yeah. Um, you know. Were the things that he might have been talking about that he did, you know, some things I maybe, some things I think were, you know, yeah, a, a I, little bit more exaggerated. But I, if you're speaking just overall as far as the type of character that Pun put out there to portray himself to be, I believe. Him. Yeah, and the reason this this dimension exists is because not everybody can pull this off. Some of us can't go, right? Some of us ain't gonna make it. I've, we've we've lived long enough to hear a lot of gangster rap come from people that just you ain't buying it, right? 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 <laughs> and, right? And then a lot of conscious rap from people that you ain't buying it. It just it don't line up. You can be nice as hell, but I, maybe I don't believe you could really do this. <laughs> you right, know? Right. Again, we talked about why Clef on this album on his verse, right? He's like in the cemetery bodies and i'm like no one's really believing that why cleft is going to do that and if he tried to perpetuate a career off of that kind of thing it wouldn't have worked for him because of right it. It like, he could be the real it could, like, it could it, it has to do a lot with with see i think what pun had is that right from the start from the very first time that you even knew or heard his name we had that picture painted of him Yes. You know what I mean? Like, it's really hard for someone, for example, like like you said, like let's say Wyclef. Wyclef could have done all kind of things, right? That, that, you know, all kind of street stuff, whatever. But the fact that our introduction to Wyclef, we already had a certain picture painted of him. So then to all of a sudden now, you know, switch up a little bit or start talking a certain way, it's going to kind of be like, yo, oh, this yeah. doesn't really sound like you, doesn't, you know, we don't really believe you. Doesn't mean he didn't do it or isn't really like that, but right. It doesn't you know work. I mean? You know, it's very it's very um it's it's not everybody can post that off, you know what I exactly. mean? Exactly. Because I mean we if we look at the history, why Clef is probably closer to that in real life than most people, right? We look at who he's surrounded by. He was close with uh Jimmy Hinchman. Uh we know John Forte was doing big, big time for drugs, right? We just finding out all this stuff about pros. So why Clef was connected. If he wanted to predicate a career off of that, he could have. It's just some are better at executing it than others, uh, you know. I, and, and so, pun, I think you hit it on the nose. Our introduction was already stoked in credibility. He made sure he came out letting you know no one was there to refute it, and it sounded believable. And that's all we're really that's all we're really talking about. We're talking about 
as, as an audio body of work is it believable I because it gets too murky to try to get into yeah like the, the too, real too fact we don't know these, right, right we don't know these people's lives but it's like do you do a good job of sounding believable for this 60 minutes or 82 minutes however long and i'm gonna say yes and i think he sounds believable in every um track that he does like the street ones the the the, the not so street like everything he talked about it sounded you know yeah I, it, it's Again, yeah. it, it, it goes back to your first dimension. It's because he has the complete package as far as charisma and comedy. Yeah. So it's like, if you if you have the complete package, it's like then any song, any direction you go in is going to sound believable because we, you know, we believe we believe you're funny. We know you can get down when you want to get down. We 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 you know we know you can take you know we know the personality match to what you're saying. Yeah. So it's it's. it's I'm t- man, he's, he's <laughs> yeah. Yo, the more you talk about it, the more you realize, like, yo, this guy was really ill. <laughs> yeah. Word choice and description style also tells a lot about it. There's a reason we buy into people by the way you describe a thing. It always makes me think of a 40 year old version. Uh, when you hear him describing, they all sit at the table talking about sex, and he's the verse. So he's like, yeah, and they're like sandbags it's like yeah. you can tell this is not someone there's certain rappers most street dudes most of their songs would sound like fast money which yeah. takes it to like that whole suspension of disbelief a good album prompts you to suspend your disbelief when it makes sense to fast money as soon as that song the first verse you understand you're being taken into a fictional story uh that's like movie level clearly terror squad is not blowing up a bank and having an all-out city yeah, shootout yeah. like heat with the police department right so but every other song pun is grounded he's telling you hey this may have happened in the past or would have happened so i mean yeah there, there's a decent job of that believability now we can talk about the most phenomenal uh playoff of believability which is what Minnesota touched on when he was on the last episode, this idea of I'm not a player, but I crush a lot. (laughs) And he said it was hard for him to fathom. He's like, how, how, Sway? (laughs) Something about, like you said a minute ago, Pun's charisma, the whole of New York City, and I don't know if, you know, the the rest of the rap world or the rest of the US or the rest of the world felt it the way we felt it in New York, but not once did we question it. It just, we, we, we accepted it. It was a hit. <laughs> but you, know, you know something, too, is that we, I think we also tend to forget, or a lot of us tend to forget that Pun wasn't always that weight. Exactly. So he never said what date, what year he's talking about. And, not, and also the other side of it, too, is that he had never even said multiple women. He just said, I crush a lot. Now, if he's married, he could be just talking about his, you know, I mean, you know, shout out to his ex. But I'm just saying, he could be just talking about his wife. He never said, "Yeah, I have, you know, chicks in all these different area codes. I crush a lot. He just said, I crush a lot. He yeah, could be he, talking he, about 20 years ago, or he could just be talking about now, or he could just be talking about his him being with his wife for 10, 15 years or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yo, drop the mic, E. They're not ready. Yeah. You're dropping gems <laughs> right now. <laughs> you know you I mean? gems. Yeah. Well, if you're a New York hip hop head like me, uh, I think this is our first visual of Pun. I heard Pun first time on Firewater by Fat Joe. No idea what he looks like. It was the debut of Pun in Armageddon. I'm all about business and enterprising. And I'm tuned. This is me being a rap nerd kid tuned in. I'm listening. I'm like, who is this guy? This guy is a problem. This is crazy. It's 1995. So then by the time You Ain't a Killer and I'm Not a Player drop as the street singles, I'm tuned in and I'm believing it because I have no idea what this guy looks like anyway. But from what (laughs) he's saying, we talked about how raunchy this song is. From what he's saying, you could tell this is a guy that has lived the amount of detail (laughs) that he was going into about the act of sex. Uh, This is not someone that is a stranger to this, right? Like, there's a way that men talk who have experienced enough (laughs) <laughs> sexual activity where it's descriptive not in a fantasy way like mm-hmm. oh these are the things that I imagine uh, I can do or you know 
I don't know how to put my finger on that. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> also, no pun intended. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, no, like, no. I get it. I get it. You're, you're right. He, he definitely spoke from a place of experience. And in the video, you yeah. know, he's twirling women. He's, he's dipping them. You could tell he was a part of that stock. Like I said, this is where I say the heavy D, the Chub Rock, the Biggie. They they set precedents for it to be okay to believe that yes, the big man could pull these women just like the 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 other you mm -hmm. know the skinny guy you know so like it was very believable because that lane had already been open he just slid in it and was like yeah I'm, I'm the Puerto Rican version of that Puerto right, Rican right. Cuban so I, I just don't remember in New York there being any doubt we just accepted mm -hmm. both versions of that song for what it is and it gave us actually new slang. You know, that's the legacy to that. No one was saying crush, like Minnesota said, that made no sense to him. And when I heard it, even I knew, I'm like, okay, this is the radio edit. But then you started hearing people saying, oh, you crushing that? <laughs> that was great. Yeah, so believability on a scale from one to five, man, what, what you giving us? I'm going to say a four. Mm. And the only reason why, I mean, it, it really is probably a five, but I'm going to say a four just to give a little bit of room for creativity. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For, you know, those songs where there's certain parts of something that you might have exaggerated or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. overall, it's probably a five, but I'm going to stick with four and a half. Four and a half. That's four and a half. Okay. Four and a half. Yeah, because... There's moments of recklessness and exaggeration. And that, even like when you said, like he goes into the horror course type of stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, there's yeah. some things in, in that aspect that I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't know <laughs> if you right. actually did, would do that or did that, but. Even hooks like, yeah, I'm selling Pelico. Like you're not doing that right now. So right, there's a little, there's a little poetic license left to right. exaggerate yeah. street stuff, right? I'm really impressed that he stayed away from calling himself like creating this like kingpin mafia don persona because i mean i think maybe hip-hop was just so tired of that he wasn't even trying to portray that or maybe maybe imagery wise he kept making the tony montana references but you never heard him kind of do this drug kingpin thing like he was like i'm in the street but it was always it was, to see that again, that goes back to what you were just saying. I think that's why we believe him so much because he literally, like you know about the Terror Squad, right? You knew about Full Eclipse crew. Um, you know, he's coming from the Bronx. You know who he's surrounded by. And I literally think he took that and put it on record. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I think during that time, coming from the Bronx, Doing the things that they were doing on a regular basis is, is was, yeah, was enough. So it had the appeal of us in New York because we already knew, like, you know, we were familiar with that, right? And then I think it had the it caught the appeal of others outside of New York because, especially at that time, people outside of New York were couldn't get enough. It's like, man, here's this guy kind of giving us without us having to be there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, no, I think. Yeah, there we go. So, I don't know. Dimension three, delivery. This is where we start getting into the nitty gritty of it. Um, I was listening to it again, again, man. And he, he switches his delivery depending on what he wants to convey. Right. That's that's the art of putting personality into your raps. You know, it's just rappers who can't do it. They're going to give you the same flow maybe the same level of complexity and the rap skill but without that knowing when to put emphasis on this word when to say this word humorously or louder than the last word that's the art right there uh, something i had to learn as a rapper myself and i still you know to this day i would have to really you got to think it's an extra skill mm -hmm. and pun does it what made him say the uh <laughs> Like Nat King, you see how aggressively he mm -hmm. starts that bar, but then he goes, one's magnums, cannons, and gatling guns, it's yeah, yeah, fun, yeah. you know? And just, God, and then, yeah, 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 yeah. Those little moments it, it, of reflection it, it, and decisions, man. Decisions of how to use your voices. That's what it's all about. Yeah, 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 it's, 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 it's wow, man, that put, wow, that's, that's, that's really dope, you just touched on that. So it's, it, it's really knowing how to, uh, 
use your 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 voice as another instrument, you know, pretty much. Pun did have a way. <laughs> yeah, you're always getting me, man. Like, yo, this is <laughs> you, oh, yo, know, it's just crazy because you don't you know you forget and like that line was really cool that you just said because that's the part i remember every time it got to that part i i, I could feel myself almost like as if i was going i was going like right with him like with the you know with, <laughs> with the flow Yo. Um, yeah and yeah yeah pun is showing his his vocal dexterity look how softly he approaches punish me uh he doesn't spare his his rap style for that song he's just is not belting the words out he's like nah baby i'm not gonna be able to do it but he's still doing his same you know da 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 yeah 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 um, no nah, it was it was like a you know a lot of guys like nas and, and um there's a couple of others in pun they also used to kind of take on not take on a persona but i feel like they looked up a lot to people like for example a frank sinatra dean martin and those guys you know what i mean from the rap pack and just that time and that era and those type of singers um that you know i think whether it was consciously or subconsciously but when they would tap into like what you're saying it's like they would give it that little finesse you know what i mean they would give it that classiness and that finesse that you know, again, if you're not familiar with a lot of those type of artists and singers, you're just gonna think like, yo, he's just freaking it. But it's, it's what makes you an artist too. You know how to marry the sonic board that you've been given. You came up, he lightens, he doesn't do anything dramatically different. He just lightens up how much space he, he uses between words. He lightens up how he bounces on the beat. Hey, yo, da 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 It's more of a, a buoyancy to that, mm -hmm. right? Super lyrical as much as you and I were talking about it, you know, he stays in that. It reminds me of when when Wayne had his era where he was trying to super enunciate everything, right? I am a beast. I am, you know, he did that throughout that whole song. He doesn't use his big voice. He doesn't use his aggressive voice. He wants to do everything is flavory from CD lasery, baby, the gated, like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. he got different voices. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Art, that's artistry, man. That's 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 not just someone pinning down rhymes. You know what I mean? That's someone like, you know, listening to the beat, listening to the music, and, and figuring out how can I be, how can I blend in with this what I'm hearing. You know yeah. what I mean? And like I said, become another instrument because if if not, you're just hearing rhymes over a dope beat, and that's when sometimes it's like, okay, the beat is high, the rhymes are high, but like. As far as it's meshing together, exactly. it, it doesn't it doesn't do nothing really. You know? And to so, me, that's what separates the artists from the rappers. A lot of people can rap, but to really make that marriage, like, hey, I'm making a song. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest use of his voice is uh, what he does on the title track, "Capital Punishment." And we'll talk more about this when we talk about flow. But he he does sing songy cadence for that entire first verse he does it for half of the second verse that i see him being drunk and around the down down for the wall again he doesn't he doesn't do that that kind of delivery on any other song on the album mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still a complex rhyme structure but he wants to be sing songy with it and it helps because that beat is very monotonous and he brings such a different approach to it it really helps um, it helps separate him from Prospect on that too. It helps you not get tired of the song sooner because like you said, he's the last instrument on that beat. Okay. Yeah. So on on delivery, and let's not even mention the, the singing. He sings on air. He sings on, you know, he has fun. He does the the UK, the la da 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 da. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he shows you his side of um, uh, Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And then when we when we talk about vocal tone, that's also something that gets factored in when you think about who you do a song with, the the features he chose. I think, yeah, I was listening to it again, and I, it, it dawned on me. I'm like, I think a, a big part of the reason you also were not really feeling the Busta Rhymes and the Wide Clef features is because out of everybody else on this album, they sound like they were trying the most. Like I listened to that Wide Clef first. Uh, maybe an hour ago, and I'm like, yo, he's rapping like cannabis. This is not a tone that I've heard Wyclef use 
for an entire verse. I've heard him go into pockets of raspiness, but he kept that delivery for his entire verse. And I'm like, what is he trying to do? If I was cannabis, especially at that time, and I'm under Wyclef, I'd be like, yo, what you doing? <laughs> He's like, keep the lights, keep the camera. He we don't that tone for the whole verse. Yeah. With Busta, I think it's that same thing. I think you hear him trying to parental discretion advise instead of like, you know, this is 1998, this ain't 95 Buster. So he had different vocal tones that he could have used, right? He could have done a, a nice verse besides pun and been like, now check the method with Tom, whatever the down the guy, down and then then that could have been a lot better. Yeah, it could have right. been way better. But we'll give a little bit of slack because again, we don't know when exactly that was recorded. We don't know when Buster did that. It could have been something, could have been something old and you know, they threw it like, yeah. We'll give so, a little, we'll give a little leave. <laughs> tone, tone contrast goes a long way, man. You never want to hear, um, you know, two B-reels on a track. You want to get that contrast of like Sin Dog and B-reel. You want that. That's, I think that's why those two tracks stand out. Everybody else that pun out on this album, it's a great playoff. Him and Fat Joe on Twins, it there's points where they sound just alike and then there's points where you get that contrast because Joe is using his big voice and punishing big voice, yeah, yeah. the more steady voice. So on a delivery, man, on a scale from one to five heartbeats, what you give and pun for that use of voice and delivery? Five. Five. That was easy for you. You ain't All hesitate, right. you ain't breathe. <laughs> no, no, that, that's, I mean, yeah, it's one of the things that I love. That takes us to the big one, man. It's everybody's favorite with the most highlighted part if you talk about big pun dementia four the flow Whew. the flow man uh so many flows so many flows per verse it's not a one flow for this verse kind of show this is you might get four switch ups in a verse in a verse yeah <laughs> even on the commercial songs I'm not a player, right? A lead single, it's supposed to be the commercial lead up. So chicken back of me bought me a daiquiri, told me meet me in Zachary's cause she heard that I was packing meat. Like it's just, and then he goes somewhere else. By the time the verse ends, he's singing. Is it all right if I come down there and sing to you like? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we talked about the capital punishment flow, right? He's just, he's riding that beat sometimes and then he's making his own beat from the flow. So he starts off with this kind of offbeat. I see men turn around and he's kind of stretching words out and it's still on beat. And then he switches it and rides it. He's like, my little cousin Juju was messing with every promiscuous fish in the sea, acquiring immune deficiency. That I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Weaving in and out of syllables and he never, ever goes off beat. All this that I like, that I enjoy the most are the ones that play around with their flow. Uh, you know what I mean? And pun to me, definitely display that on this album. You got to, for the sake of killing monotony, the, the slowest, pun almost has too much flow, too much flow for his own good. If you listen to Punish Me, he's probably not riding that beat as well as he could because he just wants to get all his points out. Uh, the Girl, slowest you're going to hear pun on this album is you came up and still not a player. That's the slowest you're going to get pun. But he doesn't rap fast. He just raps with a lot of syllables. But because he's always on time and never off beat, it's never sloppy. Everything fits right where it's supposed to fit. And then when he really is showing off, you know, Dream Shatterer is a gem. I know Super Lyrical is supposed to be the joint where it's really showing, but Dream Shatterer, because he's just weaving in and out of that beat and matching the, the changes of that beat. I gotta pull up the third verse. The third verse is really the... Uh... <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, it's funny clip of Domingo talking about um, Buckwild actually did the original uh, beat for Dream Shatterer. Mm. But they couldn't clear the sample. So that's how the version that we hear that was done by Domingo ends up on the album. The story behind Dream Shatterer is there was a different version before my version came about because that book, it was, book it was wild? yeah, it was it was yeah. yeah, it was a Barry White sample, and Puffy wow. Puffy paid Barry White not to clear the sample for nobody else. 
Oh, sick. so for Black Rob, because he was for Black Rob. Okay. So they couldn't clear it. And then yeah, Punk, Punk. Punk, yeah. And then Punk <laughs> called me one night and was like, yo, I'm in Axa Studios. You still got that beat. Please tell me what the beat. And I'm like, dude, it's yours. I've told you this for like three years now. It's yours. He's like, yo, come to Axis. And I went over there and he handed me the dat with the vocals. And he said, yo, take this home and tell me if that beat matches. And I, I pray that it matches. And it matched perfect. It was like almost as if he wrote to that beat. Mm. And then um, okay. when I played it for him, he was like, okay, cool. And we went in Cutting Room Studios in New York. And he redid the vocals in one take. A lot of people won't believe it, but he did it in one take. And and um and then um then we mixed it in unique studios. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, he says you know the pun of this you if your host is unofficial. I come and get you and let the desert ease tongue kiss you with one pistol and two clips. I make it cool, do flips like acrobatics. I'm charismatic, my gat is magic. It make rappers disappear, whisper in your ear, crystal clear, come here. Let me kiss your tears, everything you fear is here. You ain't gotta search further, the first murder's the worst. Now I thirst further for reverse birth. Every verse hurts, every curse works. Already more offending than Eddie Murph's worst. I thirst for blood like a vampire. Any man claiming his jam tighter is a goddamn liar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. No, like how, that, that, that sequence right there where he does all of the Syllable sounds that rhyme with Earth, Earth, Eddie like, Murph, and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't gotta search further. The first murder's the worst. Now I thirst further. Again, to do this and to have every rhyme, rhyming word make sense and make sense in the context of the sentences. That is what rappers don't do. Half of these guys are just saying a bunch of shit that just rhymes, but it's not a good sentence. And so all of pun's words in these sequences have connectivity it makes sense he's finishing a thought from the previous sentence even though he's rhyming in the way that he's rhyming it. Yeah, right yeah. that's kind of like you know it's funny because that uh yeah, I know, um when we interviewed uh cool kim from the umc's mm. right i had a friend of mine who wanted me to ask him like yeah what was the concept behind blue cheese like what the hell was the concept right <laughs> And you know, he said he was like absolutely nothing. He was just like, "Yo, the blue cheese was straight up just a fun song that you know we did the beat. The beat was fun." And he said he told Haas like, "Yo, let's just." He he said he's just rapping words. He's like, "It does. It's not like it means anything. It's just words put together and sound good, and they just have fun with it." Um, but I mean, of course, we know Cool Kim can get. You know, they get. They got busy. Yeah, I'm in my nerdy bag now because I mean, Pun is doing things that rappers still aren't doing or that didn't get appreciated until later on. Like I said, Pun just doing things like the Dead in the Middle of Little Italy set the stage for us to appreciate what Eminem did a year later because now we're ready. Even though, again, they've been rappers stacking syllables for eons. Big Pun stacked a sentence. And then in the middle of Little Italy, little did we know that we riddled a middle, a middleman who didn't do this. He stacked a sentence. Timing is everything. It took the world for Migos to do Bone Thugs Flow for people to appreciate Bone Thugs Flow. In the 90s, it was like, I don't know what they're saying. They're rapping too fast. Migos does it. And now for the last 10 years, it's the default flow. Everybody and their mama could do it. Huh. You know? okay. When I was doing the Bone Flow as a rapper, it's because I was paying homage to Bone. Like, me and my boys were the only one doing it and people would be like okay that's that's different and now that's what everybody does so timing and taking the commercial and mainstream world to catch up to what's popping and decide what's popping is everything uh but what i'm most impressed by is that pun is able to do the wordy flow without sounding unappealing there's a lot of people that do wordy flow and it sounds rushed it sounds like too many words. It sounds like they're trying too hard. And it's just the smoothness that he does it with. I rub your face off the earth and curse your family. Children like Amityville and drilling nerves in your cavity filling. Insanity's building a pavilion in my civilian. A canopy, the anarchy that humanity's dealing with. <laughs> you ran out of breath. 
<laughs> exactly. I'm running out of breath just reading it. I'm not even trying to recite it. <laughs> and, which, is, which is something else we didn't even touch on, right? Right. The breath control, which, you know, you yes, you can hear pun breathing on, on a lot of songs. And then there's whole patches where you can't. And sometimes they punch him in. Sometimes he just does one take. I read in a couple of the reviews saying that he did one take for a lot of his verses, but then he would punch some of his verses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who could blame him when you're doing that kind of wordy flow? Uh, but to still make it seem seamless. Uh, you know, again, to all my rappers out there that are, you know, watching, and you understand how not easy it is to construct these kind of verses and the bob and weave. Again, I use Dream Shatterer as your piece de resistance to really showcase how you can do four flows on an aggressive track and, and saying stuff that makes sense and, and saying stuff that's effective. What you giving this on a scale from one to five for flow? For flow, I'd have to give it, i give it a five. Yeah. i give it a five. Um, I, just out of curiosity, you say, you know, as a, as a rapper, how difficult is it to construct the type of rhymes that that pun was constructed? Like you as a rapper, um, I mean, again, I know certain things probably come easier for others mentally, you know, as far as how they could, fast they could think and whatever. But as a writer, you know, how how difficult do you see that type of skill pattern? He's top tier. He's he's top tier rapper flow level because i mean okay I, I maybe one notch below what you hear like the lupes and m&ms do right because that's just that's a different level and it's what you want your rappers to do because anything past that it's not really pleasing to the ear to be able to tightly package that sound audibly pleasing and have this rhythmic consequence of this you know, you are your own percussive instrument after a while, right? That Murph works, that he work, work, that he work, that he work, that he Yeah, right, it's right. high level, man. It's, it's one of the highest levels you can get to. You put the average rapper with a pen right now, they're going to be A, B, A, B. A rap with a cat and a hat like that, especially this generation. You know, this generation, you ain't, yeah. this is chanting. You just got to chant. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you said you're giving this a five? A I give the flow a five. All right. That takes us to dimension five, the wordplay and bar intent. Another high, <laughs> high dimension of concentration if we're talking about pun. It's just, there's, there's intentionality. He knows what he's saying. He'll say what he means to say. He wants you to know what he's saying. He put thought into it. It's not pedestrian, but it's not too intricate where it's super nerdy and he's gonna lose you. Then he's not afraid to get silly. I, I, I thought the way he came on Caribbean Connection was a little silly. Yeah, the flipping the little Kim line and then doing the raspberry. <laughs> 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 I was like, come on, pun. But, I mean, wordplay. This guy said, <laughs> sometimes rhyming, I blow my own mind like Nirvana. Oh. <laughs> it took me so long to really get what he was saying because I'm like, oh, Nirvana's a higher level. You blow your mind. No, I'm like, oh, that's a double entendre. Yeah. You mean Kurt Cobain. Kurt right? Cobain, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. not like his drop the mic line. That's just the line it after. Just the kind of, yeah. <laughs> of many lines. And, yeah. and I always say this, you can get away with simpler lines and wordplay if you're keeping them coming. Right. If you watch watch any good stand up, it's not the big joke that the comedian made. It's how many they hit you with right before they delivered mm -hmm. the, the last one. Right, and right. If they tied it back to a joke that they already made previously. Oh, it's, it's brilliant. <laughs> I want to go back to something. I actually want to backtrack a little uh, statement I made on the first video when we were talking about super lyrical and how we both weren't impressed. So I went back and I'm like, yes, if you read these verses, Black Thoughts verses and Puns verses, yes, they do make sense as pieces of prose work, pieces of poetry work. If you read them line for line, they make sense. Mm -hmm. But there's something missing about the impact or the 
effect of what they're saying. There's no ooh and ah moments, right? Because Pun is saying some some shit, right? He's like, you know, I'll battle Satan uh, and take the devil's halo. I'm just asking you, God, if I do that, send my father back as an angel. He's saying some stuff. Yeah, yeah. But there's, there's just certain lines that hit more because of how they're put together and what's said. So on Beware, where he's like, I'm telling you, you niggas can't do shit to me. <laughs> Physically, lyrically, hypothetically, realistically, there's just more oomph to a line like yeah, that. That's, than, that's that's more like that King shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you know, you're right. And he does say some, some weak stuff like, I keep my rhymes flavory, like it's just a rhyme with the yeah, with the yeah. pattern that he put there. As opposed to on Beware, just the description, he said, I'm not the one you should be underestimating. Come test your fate and I guarantee I'll be under investigation. You can't handle the hoe. I slam you on your skull. We can go blow for blow like Evander and Bo. You never know. However, though, I still hold the title and owe my rivals a chance to dance with Mr. Homicidal. Hand on the Bible. Again, every word connects. He takes the boxing metaphor <laughs> and 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 runs with it and, and connects it to the, the violence thing. Like he's like, yo, I'll use the gun. Test your fate, I'll be under investigation. So let me take it to the hands. Mm -hmm. And if you lose, I'll give you a chance to come back for a rematch mm -hmm. and dance with Mr. <laughs> Homicidal. But then after that he goes to some biblical space yeah. and you know it's just that's what you want your rappers to do you want them to be understandably intricate make the sentences make sense and and and, and with different flows that's all that's all we ask give me effort that's effort <laughs> that's johnny depp acting right there that's johnny depp making you believe he's edward scissorhands <laughs> well listen if 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 we don't have some of the rappers that don't do that we won't appreciate the ones that do it <laughs> there you go, there you go. <laughs> so yeah. we need a little balance so yeah i mean there's there's, there's intentionality all intentionality this uh there's wordplay all over this album um you know, pun is using similes, pun is using metaphors, pun is using onomatopoeia, pun is using all the literary devices. And uh, what you're giving this on the scale from one to five heartbeats? Uh, I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to say a four and a half. <laughs> what you leaving the point five for? The skits. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that pack in the back in the back in the back. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, no, I'm messing around. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Hey, listen, it's on the album, man. <laughs> he does not he does not sacrifice it, even when he's talking about the deep stuff. We're getting into that. Um, Dimension 6, the quotability, the punchlines, and poetic wisdom. Either or. Right, whatever makes this album quotable, I usually separate it into one or the other because most rappers do one or the other. I think Pun gives you both on this album. You know, Pun will say something like, uh, come to your dwelling, call you gay on Hot 97, got the new heavy yeah. right behind your melon, right? Yeah, but yeah, then yeah. He'll also say something like, I'm in a state of grace, in a hated race by the agate face. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, so, but do you, do you think pun, like, like he does, he has a lot of them, but do you think that his are as memorable? Like, in other words, can, can, can the average person right now, like if you said, you know, can they just boom, pull out of one of those of pun. You know what I'm saying? Like, without really yeah, thinking. Absolutely. From this album alone, just, if if it's nothing more, for, so the casual listener is not going to be digging as deep as we are, right? So you ask the casual listener to quote pun, they're probably going to quote still not. More equal, more than, no, no. <laughs> they're, they're probably going to quote, they're probably going to quote still not a player, but even what they're going to quote for still not a player is going to be um, a punchline. I'm sick, you couldn't measure my with six rulers, like, 
this punchline's on throughout that song. It is. But he's not a punchline rapper. He doesn't care about landing it and you getting it and be like, oh, and he's going to keep giving it to you, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah, they're going to quote the first line of Dream Shatter, right? Yo, I shatter dreams like Jordan, assault and batting your team. I'm carving my initials on your forehead so every night before bed you see the BP shine off the board at like, he's going to keep throwing them at you. And when he's not doing that, I think to answer your question, the poetic wisdom he gives is what's underappreciated. I don't, I never hear anybody talking about how deep pun gets. So on tracks like Boomerang, on tracks like uh, Capital Punishment, on tracks like Parental Discretion, he really does go into this commentary. His, his poetic sensibility gets overlooked. Like Capital Punishment, he says, Get off your high horse or die off like an extinction. Boricans are like Moricans, the last of the pole Ricans. We need some unity, F all the Jeeps and jewelry. The maturity keeps me six feet above obscurity. The streets are deadly and everybody's a desperado. Guess tomorrow ain't promised unless you're honest and death's the motto. Like Zorro, I mark my territory with a symbol. Not a Z, but a P, cause punishment's what I resemble. Like, he has these moments where he's just making these thought-provoking statements, but like you mentioned, if you're getting caught up in, if you only heard the singles, you're not looking for those. If you only caught up in, I have no idea why that stuff gets overlooked. And I don't know if he really got a chance to put those types of songs out there as as a single. I would have loved to hear Pun make a, a song like Jadakiss made Why. I think Pun would have killed Why, you know? Yeah. Because he has that, and he had the want to do that. There's a lot of rappers that don't even give us the want. I don't think Terror Squad, uh, the whole squad, would have let that happen. Because you look at the album that Joe put out the same year, they had a track called The Hidden Hand. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that was dope. I'm like, yo, they still take time out to talk about substantial things. But Pun just had, he used words, man. I, I tell you, the word choice always is going to tell you what kind of person you're dealing with. You listen to a song like You Ain't a Killer, he's not being super raunchy or crazy violent. It's more of a, a mental song. He's like, watch out for who you do street business with. He just goes into some territory to let you know, oh, this is a poet. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a million ways to describe street stuff, but Pun chooses to use words that bring it and he said something like my team's the meanest thing you ever seen measured by the heavens kings down to the devil's mezzanine i never scream so loud i'm proud to be alive most heads die by 25 or catch a quick three to five so be advised the streets full of surprises it's not what crews the livest one of survivors who's the wisest like he's giving you life game Ooh. and and who says the heaven's kings down to down the destiny. The... <laughs> like, come on, man. He's a poet. And so in one album, you get the same guy that's going to say something like, you know, you'll see the BP shine off your forehead. I call you gay on Hot 97. <laughs> um, but then, but then I see what you mean, but then can take it to like some right. old freaking <laughs> Socrates. <laughs> like, you know. Bro, pardon, pardon the crass reference, but it's like getting a woman with double D's and a big booty. It's just, that's not the norm. You know, you either get one or the other. It's either eight cups and a booty. Right, 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 right. Flat, <laughs> flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, no, it, 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 it's, yeah. Yeah, he's, 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 he's amazing. a rarity in that sense. Uh, so for quotability, because I know you were making this other point though, like, Yes, these are quotable to a fan, but how much does hip hop history quote Big Pun? Um, yeah, but now, I, I think those are two. It's two separate things. It's two I, separate. Let, it's two separate. Yeah, I, let's stick with okay. quotability, right? Which right. I'm going to give it a five. Got you. We're going to give it a five. You know what I mean? What we were talking about, that's like a whole different. Right. It's a, you know, there's a different topic even, you know what I mean? So let's just say, quotability, I give it a five. Perfect. And, you know, the facts show that even the song that we think was a little lackluster, Pun got Hip Hop Quotable of the Month for his first verse on Super Lyrical. So, yeah. again, if you read it, it does make sense. It's right. just missing some of it's those... It's just the song itself. Right. It's missing. it's missing some of those quotable moments 
within the verse. T mm -hmm. Together as a verse, it's a dope verse. Mm -hmm. By itself, there's nothing that really, there's no line that I could be like, oh, you know. So, Dimension 7, Concepts. Every good classic album should probably have some conceptual material that the same way I talked about wordplay and intention, how the rapper is putting in extra effort to not just bore you with something that you feel like anybody could do. Mm -hmm. This is challenging you as the listener more than just a song you can play in the background because they're taking you somewhere where you got to think differently or listen with more effort and intention. So are there any concepts on this album? Concept? I think on the album, there's concepts in within the verse. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, we're thinking concept song, right? So <laughs> No, 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 I know. I'm joking. I'm just saying that oh, like, gotcha. you got to like, come up with little concepts just within the verse, you know what I mean? Uh, but full fledged now. On the second album, he does. On the second album, the little skit, uh, ironically, uh, that nigga shit <laughs> is, is kind of conceptual because he's keeping one theme throughout the whole thing and just, you know, like naming things that you would associate with yeah, yeah. behavior, right? So yeah. like, but on this album, everything's loose. So we talked about glamour life. Each of those rappers are exaggerating uh, the, the lifestyle. street lifestyle mm -hmm. in, in a way that's reminiscent of all the famous movies, the casinos, yeah. the, you know, but I don't know if that's obvious to the casual listener. When I was young, I'm listening to it. I'm like, oh, they're just talking some gangster stuff. But now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, they're like telling you what they want to do. Like, I want to live like this. I want to have a mansion and blah, 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 blah from a legal transaction. Like, Boomerang is a loose concept because he's telling you about the downfall of him being on top in the street world. It's not even a real story. He's telling things in story elements, but the overall theme is that this is the bad time and that he's gonna bounce back eventually. All right, so in the first verse, he's telling you how things were going good. They were party, everybody was Sean Donnan, right? And then at the end, he had to like split up his team and go shoot up his enemies and leave town. And he's like, but I'll be right back. And then he's like, top of the world, ma, top mm. of the world. And then the second verse, he starts off saying, should I slip my wrist, right? Picture me leaving my wife and my daughter. And then at the end, he's like, something's got to give because I'm feeling suicidal. Mm -hmm. Loose concept because both verses don't really equate to the same thing, but you get the idea, the overarching loose theme is that this is a bad time for him. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't think, uh, I think you're saying it perfectly by saying loose concepts, you know, they're, yeah. they're kind of just, you know, putting a story together and, and, but, but they're not, it's not something that's super intricate, you know what I mean? It's not something that's like you know, that you have to rewind because you're trying to understand the concept. You know what I mean? Like, wait, what, you know, like, what was he saying? Was he talking about really? Right. Or, you know, there's really, yeah, it, it's, yeah. Concept, that should be a, 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 a category. <laughs> yeah, concept. I always, more, more albums than not have loose concepts. If you, you know, ever wanted to look for concepts, organized confusion is where to go. On one album alone, I think, they're rapping like neo-Nazis on one. They got a song where they're rapping like babies in, mm -hmm. in the womb. They got a song where they're rapping like dudes in the club that they're fighting and they're rapping from both perspectives of yeah, being yeah, yeah, yeah. organized confusion, talking about the dudes that want to fight them and going and Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're it's, just too conceptual for their own good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, um, as yeah. far as this album, I, I don't think it's done in a way where there's a penalty for not having a concept because you can tell that pun can go there and because he dances in it mm -hmm. i feel like it is safe enough what would you give this on a scale from one to five five means it, it it's great it doesn't do anything to damage the album one means it's lacking because it was too basic <laughs> oh man that's tough though because well on that note I'm gonna have to give it a one. Woo! <laughs> Holy shit! But 
the question is how much the, the lack of concepts affect that percentage you know what i mean sometimes it just doesn't have an effect like I how much know. how much does it affect the album you mean as far as being a classic yeah, not, not having a concept yeah oh no i mean that to me zero okay so then it would be a five i feel like he was doing more storytelling than actually coming up with intricate concepts got you yeah, or is that or was that not right I agree, but then the two examples I gave, they're not stories. Glamour Life is not a story. They're rapping in a, a certain theme. There's yeah, a theme but that's that's on. that's the Sugar Hill rap. <laughs> I want 50 inch TV on my wall so I can watch yeah. me playing basketball. That's 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 Sugar Hill rap, you know what I mean? That's, that's true. That's but they're all Jungle Brothers it. bragging and boasting, you know what I mean? But, like But it's different bragging and boasting than like when you hear Terror Squad rap on the Funk Master Flex album the next year, they're just bragging, boasting about taking crews out. This was bragging, boasting as if it's all from illegal profits from the street lifestyle to live like the characters from the movie. So there was, they were all at least staying on that mood. <laughs> He's not buying it. He's like, no, nah. nah, because I, I, I'm. Because that to me, again, that's that. If you're talking about, and I just want to get this right, because if you're talking about the type of concept songs that we just mentioned, mm -hmm. that doesn't add up to that. Got you. Okay. That doesn't add up to that. That to me, you came up is another, you know, Nas and AZ. That's another, it's, 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 it was that type of talk at that time. Like to me, that was, that was. Okay. You 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 understand what I'm trying to say? Like I do. You were good. You were thinking of a one. You were thinking of a two. No, I was thinking about... of a two at first, but then I, I'm going with a one because. What about one point five? Right in between those two. There was nothing on there that made me go back and try to figure out what exactly he's talking about. There yeah. might be certain things that he says that was like, wait a minute, what did he say again? As far as like how he put the rhyme together or how you know what i mean but not as far as the song gotcha. it was nothing that made me think like oh shit, wait a minute he's talking about right a bridge you know what i mean or he was talking about meanwhile i thought it was yeah there was none of that type of factor for me yeah so I, if we're talking in that regard i'm giving it a one got you all right that takes mm -hmm. us to the content dimensions i usually put these together dimension eight and dimension nine Dimension eight is the external content. How much is Pun talking about things outside of his inner feelings? So he's talking about the hood, the world, relationships, politics, the government. Internal, dimension nine, is going to be how much of his life story, his feelings is he giving. Dimension capital punishment, he's making statements on the state of lots of things. He's talking about how government systems are set up, how Blacks and Latinos keep falling for the same traps. And he has those moments where he puts in his personal feelings, he's conflicted because he's like, give me a Mac, I'll do this for the money because I need it. But then he says, I'm sick of, I'm, what do you say? I'm tired of getting hired and fired as a pistolier. Mm -hmm. And he's like, we got to come up with something because the government is waiting to trap me with capital punishment. Right, right, right. Um, he speaks on AIDS in the second verse. He just speaks on the whole last of the Puerto Rican thing. So he's mm -hmm. got that. Mm -hmm. where he's talking about the state of affairs around him and what he sees. He does the same thing on parental discretion. Like the second verse, he's just like, BS, I challenge the statistics. Violence existed before our music was even suggested. So blame it all on the gangster rapper. And he goes into that whole space. Um, right. But yeah, he's, he's very capable of doing that. He gives you a good amount of that stuff. But I, like I said in the last mention, I think he's not remembered for that stuff as much as he's remembered for the more crude stuff. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. It gets, a, it gets a little overshadowed sometimes. And again, I think a lot of that has to do with the way he rhymed, you know what I mean? The way he put so much into a verse mm -hmm. um, that I think just some things would tend to get a little lost, you know what I mean? Like Because he would say so much yeah in one verse for example that like you know like you just said he would say that but then he's like right on to you know he kept he keeps going mm -hmm. and um i think sometimes it just gets a little overlooked but he definitely again it's a shame we only got what we got from him musically man because i like you're right i think if he would have 
been around for a little bit longer, uh, we would have seen where there would be whole songs instead of just yeah. verses and things dropped in here and there. But I think we would have got like whole songs that we'd have been like, wow, like he's really in tune with what's going on with the yeah. politics. Why wow, he's really in tune with whether it's the family, you know, his kids were small at the time. So who knows, like, you know, as they're growing, what type of, you know what I mean? I, I, I definitely think he had it in him. Um, and we, like you said, we see bits and pieces throughout the and album. And there's not a street song besides Fast Money where he does not go inward. Like mm. he really makes sure he drops those little bit, bits of knowledge and self-awareness, even when he's being his most violent and gritty, he's right. just like, Yo, like, I love what he did. And I guess this takes us, you know, more into the internal stuff because on in the middle of You Ain't a Killer, he says, I hate the fact that I'm the last edition, probably a statistician. I could have went to school and been a mathematician. I was just like, he just has these moments where he's like, I know what I'm doing is wrong, but I'm doing it. And right, I'm, right. <laughs> you right. know, it is just, and then I have the smarts to be able to, to do this if I wanted to or if I apply myself to or but I'm doing you know like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like even on Dream Shadow he said something like involved in the life of crime I like to shine like, he, just, <laughs> <laughs> he, he always has that awareness it's what you know Nipsey was really good at that too I think Pun and Nipsey float in that same territory like Nipsey be like yeah this gang banging probably don't make sense but then in the next sentence he's like yeah it's rolling 60s all day like they you wouldn't put it on wax you wouldn't put it to pin if it wasn't in the back of your mind these are those things that when we hear our rappers and, live to be 50 and they reflect and they'd be like yeah I was wild to have that level of awareness puts you in a different caliber so yes. like Pun will give you lines like that. Like, mm -hmm. yo, we need to do something better. But for now, while it looks hopeless, this, this is what, what it I'm is. doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And, and then it gives you vulnerability of just, just rappers being willing to tell you they're poor. There's a lot of rappers out there to this day will just make you think they came out the womb with, with mm -hmm. you know, the dollar sleeve, the hundred dollar sleeve. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, no. So so this is so we talking about the internal, right? The internal. We talking about the external. external how much and you giving that on one five and the internal? How much you giving that on one five? I probably I'd have to give. I have to give them both a five. Even though we just said he only has like one or two songs where he's about the government and parental discretion you feel like those are strong enough to give it a five for the external content because you can also it's, count it's, you can also count punish me and i'm not a player that's also content it may not be deep content but he's talking about women he's taking a break from braggadocio to right right talk about some other stuff so right 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 so i mean again this thing like, it's 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 a short you know but i think he i think he tackles on both in a way enough with the amount of work that he put into the album if that makes sense yeah in the um, first video we talked about this album being really balanced like he talks about a lot of things right the difference between you came up and parental discretion and punish me they're all different topics they are topics and i think also what maybe also what i'm thinking about is the fact that again you can have one song and sometimes within that one song he does even if it's a line or two or something but he touches on yes different things you know what i mean so like i guess if we you know so we're talking about actual song then you might be like yeah you know i don't know if you really but if you listen to things that he's saying he is dropping so that's why i kind of give it a five because we didn't get a chance to hear more from him so within that little bit it was like he was giving you everything he yeah. was giving you a little bit of the external he was giving you a little bit of internal it just not might be on the big scale that we're kind of you know can use like these other artists yeah or compared to in my opinion you know what i mean yeah. so I, that's I, why i, I give it a five for both five for both yeah i definitely felt like i got to learn i came out that album felt like i knew who pun was so five, yeah, for, five both. for each that takes us to the final dimension we've been talking about this storytelling i've heard back in the day that you, you don't have a classic album unless you have a good story on it do you believe that theory? That you don't have a classic album if you have if you don't have a good story. 
Now, don't do this to me, man. Don't start using yeah. other artists as examples. I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> do I believe that story? Story. Oh, my God. So um, the, only, the only full story on this album is Fast Money. Yeah. Right. I listened to that again, and I'm like, okay, it is a heist. At the end, Fat Joe pulls up with 20 Terror Squad members, and they have to shoot out with the police and get away. Pun was just about to tell Cuban Link, save himself, kiss my wife for me and, and send my love. I'm going all out with a grenade launcher. Like, <laughs> that's the full story. But like you mentioned, he tells stories all over this album in different verses. In different verses, yeah. Ah. Uh, shit, man. You be, okay. <laughs> so the... <laughs> yeah. Punish Me, each verse, each verse on Punish Me is its own story. Each verse. That's what I think the problem... Not the problem, but I think that's what makes it a little difficult to kind of judge with his album is because he kind of does those things sporadically just within verses, <laughs> not the whole song. So it's hard to say. It's like he does, but he doesn't. <laughs> right. So he doesn't have a I got a story to tell on this album. But because he tells stories in so many different places, the level of storytelling the level of what, Story. is what we're going to rank here. Okay, so the level. If there was a if, good memorable story on here or any good we, we would story. be talking about it easily, right? Right, right it popped right up. Yeah, so that, that's kind of like what I was saying about the, the quotables and stuff. But um, yeah, that's tough. So so wait, we gave we gave the uh, you gave the concept one. The concepts of one. You gave the content five. Contents of Five. Right. And now we're talking about storytelling. Mm -hmm. It's the final dimension here. <laughs> well, that kind of makes sense because if we're saying that that one was kind of lower, then it's like it kind of goes hand in hand. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to give it a three. Three for storytelling. I'm going to give it a three. And I'm going to give it a three because I'm just going to add that half for the one I gave a one that you said not a one and a half. So I throw that, <laughs> I, I, you're, you're hilarious. <laughs> I throw that in there. But no, it, it is, you know, it's because it's sporadic and it's not a full. So I'll give it a three. I'll okay. It. And on that note, we have concluded the entire review parts one and two of the debut album by Big Pun. Big Pun. The classic, classic Capital Punishment. 25 years old. Uh, this has been brought to you by Changing of the Hip Hop Guards and F a Rap Critic. Uh, as Uncle E told you in the beginning, if you have not subscribed to either channel, what are you doing? Go click, go do that now. Follow us on IG, uh, follow us on all the media, tell a friend to tell a friend. Leave your comments and rankings below. Go on Changing of the Hip Hop Guards page, go to Uncle E's personal page, go to my page go to F a Rap Critic or go to rapruler.com and officially leave your rankings so we can have a site where we can go and say, oh, according to this, this is what most people have ranked this um, on a real decisive scale. And that, that's all I ask. Uncle E, you want to take us home? Let us know what y'all got cooking, what's next down the pipeline, where else they can find you. Well, um, once again, thank you very much for allowing me to join you on this. It was a pleasure, a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, just everybody make sure to go Changing of the Hip Hop Guards on YouTube. You can follow us on Instagram, the same name, Changing of the Hip Hop Guards. Yeah, leave us a comment, man. Let us know what you think of the videos and interviews. And stay tuned, man. We got a lot more coming our way soon. Uncle E, it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. I love doing this with the fellow pros and the experts. And uh, you, you did this and, and made this something to remember, man. We will definitely circle back and do some more stuff in the future, man. It, it's, it's great, man. It's been, it's been an experience. And y'all know what it is. Until next time, F a rap critic. They talk about it while I live it. <laughs>